What has changed for the 2021 F1 season? The 2021 season has almost arrived and that means you all need to know exactly what has changed for the next 23 races ahead of us. Well fear not, you will have all the information you've ever dreamed of by the end of this video. With the 2022 regulations taking centre stage, it's easy to think that not much has changed for this year, but there has been a fair amount. Let's start with the physical changes of the car, what the eagle-eyed of us will notice as the drivers head out on track. The floor has been a big talking point coming into this season as F1 attempts to strip back downforce levels to stop the cars from becoming too quick. They have to do this a lot of the time because engineers are just too damn clever and always come up with creative designs. You may have noticed various slots poking out of the car's floor in 2020 to help direct the airflow underneath to create a stronger suction and therefore giving more grip. These slots are no longer allowed for this year. The surface area at the rear of these floors have also been cut down too, which further reduces downforce. There has also been more minimal changes made to the diffuser, which has been cut down by 50mm, and the rear brake duct winglets have been shortened, all in the aid of, you guessed it, reducing downforce. It's expected to be a reduction of around 10% or so. Whilst we're on the subject of aerodynamics, let's talk about a new development for 2021, which is the aerodynamic testing regulations. If you're a Ferrari fan, you'll want to listen closely to this because their form last year may have been part of a wider, big brain master plan that had us all fooled. Essentially, the lower a team finished in 2020 in the constructors, the more time they've been given in either the wind tunnel or using computational fluid dynamics or CFD for short. With Ferrari finishing sixth last year, they will have a decent chunk of time over the likes of Mercedes and Red Bull. Here's a table, albeit a little confusing, from F1 that explains the percentage time differences between teams. You'll also notice it shows the deficit for higher placing teams becoming even more prominent from 2022 onwards. One team that beat Ferrari last year and narrowly missed out on third place in the constructors was Racing Point, now known as Aston Martin. They were massively criticised last year for their pink Mercedes, and F1 ain't allowing something like this to happen again. No more can I copy your homework memes. Well, kinda, as the 2020 chassis has been carried over from last year, so technically speaking, Aston Martin still is a green Mercedes. Teams have been told they are not allowed to make deals with other teams for their listed car components, and F1 has also banned the use of 3D cameras, so teams will have to spy on their rivals with a good old standard camera. In a nutshell, F1 is saying, do your own work, kids. Speaking of banning things, if you're hopeful that Mercedes will be pegged back a bit, and from testing it certainly gave us a glimmer of hope, DAS, the dual axis system that Mercedes ran last year, has been outlawed. Last year it helped the team to warm up their tyres by using an innovative creation that enabled the drivers to change their camber levels of their front tyres by either pulling or pushing the steering wheel whilst driving. It's pretty crazy when you say it out loud. Hold up, hold up, stop the video. Yep, that subscribe button still isn't pressed yet, is it? The F1 2021 season is fast approaching. We've got tons of Formula 1 content in the bag ready to be released. Subscribe and you will be entertained. Love ya. Now we move on to a change in F1 that will hopefully bring the teams closer together over the next few years, the cost cap. $145 million has been set as the limit for this season, $140 million in 2022 and $135 million in 2023. This is certainly a step in the right direction to stop huge teams dominating, but it may be a while till we see the effects of this as teams will have been investing heavily into the 2022 regulations already without a budget cap. Does the cost cap cover everything, I hear you ask? Not quite. It doesn't cover driver salaries, otherwise the cars would probably be made out of cardboard. The other main exceptions to the restrictions are marketing costs and the top three highest paid members of the team. Everything else, the general running of an F1 team, comes under the $145 million for this year. Oh, and teams are also allowed to buy new machines and so on for their factories until the end of 2024 and have a whopping $45 million to spend on that. It's clear to see that it's not an all-encompassing cost cap. F1 are also attempting to reduce costs in the sport by increasing the minimum weight of the cars, up 6 kilograms to 752 kilograms, and the power units, up 5 kilograms to 150 kilograms, to stop teams using materials they've sourced from the core of the earth that cost them a billion dollars to create. I'm not exaggerating, I promise. Whilst on the topic of materials, it's worth mentioning that flax, hemp, linen, cotton and bamboo are now all allowed to feature in F1 as part of their campaign to make the sport greener. How on earth they'll utilise these materials is beyond me, but that's why I'm not an engineer. 
A few other changes to mention which relate to tyres. Pirelli are bringing more robust compounds this year after the learnings they especially had at the British Grand Prix where there were three tyre failures at the end of the race. These tyres were tested over the course of last season in free practice sessions. The other change is that the procedure of choosing which compound you want, for example two softs, five mediums and eight hards, has been scrapped and it will now be a set batch for every single driver. A little bit of variation that has unfortunately been taken out, but it shouldn't really affect things. And finally, the only change to the actual weekend format is that free practice sessions are now all 60 minutes long, which should give us some nice frantic action as teams scramble to collect data each weekend. There you have it, all the information you needed before the 2021 season starts. Which change do you like the most? Let us know in the comments section below.